The time has come for the Monday, February the 3rd, 2020, regular city council meeting. Roll call, please. Alderman Bolton. Present. Alderman Seeger. Present. Alderman Mosio. Here. Alderman Kirkwood. Here. Alderman Newsom. Present. Alderman Turner. Here. Alderman Rivera. Present. Alderman Florian. Present. Alderman Taylor. Present. Mayor Cunningham. Present. Uh, to lead us in the invocation would be Apostle Dr. Micah Hargett, Senior of Loving Arms Church in Waukegan. And immediately following that, we'll have our junior ROTC young men and young ladies leaders in the Pledge of Allegiance. All rise. Most gracious. Abba, hey. Please recite the Pledge of Allegiance. No, oh, that, no, 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 I don't finish. I'm going to read your prayer first. Sorry about that, John. Okay. Right. Most gracious Heavenly Father, first let me say thank you on behalf of all those gathered here today. Thank you for your many and abundant blessings. We thank you, Father, for life itself, for the measure of health that we need to fulfill our callings, for the sustenance and the sustainment of your friendship. We thank you for the ability to be involved in useful work for the honor and appropriate responsibilities that you have given us. We thank you for the freedom to embrace you, and we thank you for the freedom also to reject you. We thank you for loving us even when we do not love ourselves. In the scriptures, you have said that citizens ought to obey the governing authorities. And since you have established those very authorities to promote peace and order, Father, we pray for our first responders, the firemen, the police officers, and many others behind the scenes of this great city, from our city public works departments to our 911 call center operators, to the school cafeteria workers and the citizens present here today. Father, we pray for the mayor and for all the representatives of the various city officials present here today. And in particular, we pray for this assembled council here. I'm asking that you would grant them wisdom to govern, even when we are faced with conflicting interest in the issues of today. Father, we pray for the agenda that is set for them today. And please give us an assurance that we will be able to carry out what would benefit those who live, work, in and around our beloved city of Waukegan. For these are the things that we ask, we seek, and we pray in Jesus' most precious and holy name. Together, let all of God's people say, amen. 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 These will set the Pledge of Allegiance. Begin. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, Indivisible, liberty, and justice for all. All right, thank you. Apostle, I know they made you proud, man. They yes, they did. <laughs> I love saying that. So. I just sing the song, too. All right. We have uh, Mayor's comments. Uh, just so everyone know. Our next city council meeting will be Tuesday, February 18th. Uh, that's due to President's Day on that Monday. Again, uh, the next council meeting will be February 18th, which will be on the Tuesday, not the Monday, due to President's Day. City stickers. City stickers are now on sale. If you uh, renew between February 1st and March 31st, you can purchase uh, for the early bird cost. Also, don't forget to purchase your animal tags for your pets. Locations for the uh, for city stickers outside of City Hall, uh, and they're going to go as follow: Belvedere and Green Bay Road, Currency Exchange, 2856 Belvedere Road, New Grand and Green Bay, Currency Exchange, 3200 Grand Avenue, Washington and Lewis Currency Exchange. 1817 Washington Street, New Washington and Sheridan Latino Currency Exchange, 126 Washington Street, 
and MUNS2 LLC currency exchange at 225 South Green Bay Road. I don't know if you want to get a close up or not. All right. All right. What we've been talking about for about the last five months, this is a reminder and very important to the city of Waukegan. The census will begin in April. We're asking to the public, please get ready. Census workers will be contacting you, knocking on doors. You might think they might be harassing, but they're not. We need for all of you, everyone in the city of Waukegan, to be counted. Let me tell you why. Uh, right now, I think our census track right now states we're about 89, about 89,000. Well, I'm here to tell you, the city of Waukegan, public works, police, fire, city services, we service well over 125,000 citizens throughout the city of Waukegan. So that's a massive undercount. I think that the dollar amount, is it, Noel uh, helped me out, is it per, is about $1,400 per resident that we miss out on, on dollars from federal funds. We need your help. 14. You're going to be asking a lot of you know a lot of questions of you, but this city, right now, we are the tenth largest city in the state of Illinois. I've, I've been corrected. If we move up to that 125,000 mark where we should be, that will put us right around the sixth, lar sixth or seventh largest city in the state of Illinois, north of Lake Cook Road. That will put us the largest community in the northern part of the state of Illinois. It is critical that we have your help with this, this process. Snow plows. Again, we're asking for anyone who owns a car parked on our city streets. When there is snow, particularly over two inches, as it might, two inches of snow, anything over two inches, we need. And there's going to be a coming time we're going to say, you must move your vehicle off the street. <clears throat> if not, we're going to be moving to not just ticketing, but removing your vehicles so we can clean our city streets. You're asking why. If we do not get what we call to the curb line, when we plow those streets, when the snow melts, as it has been over the last two or three days, it does not go into the drains like it should be, which would then clog up those drains, which means we have to go and sometimes fix and things like that. There's a cost. If we can get them to the curb line because our drains now are now open and they can drain properly, it helps to preserve our streets and our community. We need your help on this. We're truly not, we've been very hesitant about moving to removing vehicles off, off the side streets, and I know it's difficult. But some of our streets are not meant for cars to be parked on both sides. Some of our streets are meant for cars to be parked on one side. And in some of them, we're, we're a pretty old city. It's not meant to be parked at all on the street. So we need your help. If you have a driveway, just until our trucks can, and plows can get through what we call one bypass, that would be extremely helpful. Everyone can participate with this. So thank you for your help. Upcoming events. As everyone, uh, everyone knows, uh, the beginning of February is Black History Month, so please keep, eye, uh, please keep your eye out for upcoming events, including those by the Waukegan Library, the Waukegan School District, also check out the display in the lobby about the city of Waukegan's black history. And I'm going to name one of them. Anybody know what Frog Island is in here? Frog Island for uh, uh, the New Jacks, it's the west side of town uh, by uh, Yeoman, Webster School. All of that area used to be called Frog Island. The Armory, the Circle. The Armory, the Circle. So downstairs, get a ch uh, if you get a chance on your way out, take a look at some of that African-American history and how it started. Uh, next council meeting, I'm going to talk about Market Street a little bit. Uh, Waukegan School District is showing the documentary Push Out. 
the criminalization of black girls in schools on Thursday the 6th and Friday the 7th of February at 6.30 p.m. at Trap Auditorium. It is, it is a no cost to the public and all the public is welcome. The Waukegan High School rifle pistol team. They got a pistol team? Oh. The Waukegan High School rifle and pistol team hosts their annual Valentine's Day shoot Shoot on Saturday the 8th, is that correct? What do you mean shoot, you gonna? Oh, okay then, you're not gonna shoot through. No, all right, I wanna make sure. Yeah, so the rifle team will be having their, uh, this is their annual Valentine's uh, Day shoot on Saturday the 8th. You may get the opportunity to shoot against Rena Rivera. Oh, so look, Keith, look competition. Competition, yeah. Rena Rivera, who qualified for Junior Olympics. Congratulations. Give it up, everybody. And Anthony Guzman, along with Leanne Alabenos, Abelanosa, who both placed first in recent competitions, entered through the door seven. Stand up, the ones that names I call. Stand up so everybody can see you. Is that you? All right, yeah. Junior Olympics. Congratulations to you. Enjoy Three Brothers Theater production of English First, Boing Boing at stage 20, 221 at 7.30 p.m. on Friday and Saturday through February 29th. February Art Walk is Saturday the 15th, February the 15th, in downtown Waukegan, Waukegan Arts and Entertainment District, at, uh, uh, from 5 to 10 p.m. And uh, we're gonna have a presentation by Coles, but before we do that, she's not here, but all of us, Alderman, let's wish Jane a very happy birthday. Happy birthday, Jane. She's not here, she's, uh, she'll be back tomorrow. But it's her birthday, I think it's tomorrow, so we're gonna, we wish you a happy birthday, Jane. At this time, we're gonna ask uh, Coles Museum representative to stand up and she's gonna give us a little information about Coles Museum and the activities. Thank you. I wanted to show a PowerPoint, but we don't have that set up, so I have here. Oh. oh, goodness, I'm sorry. We have enough for everybody, but there's a lot of information on our website. Um, so my name is Stephanie Bynum. I'm the Vice President of Programs at Cole Children's Museum. Um, and I'm happy to announce that we just opened our third annual pop-up museum here in Waukegan. So this is our third year here and we're really thrilled to be here. Um, we are at a new location. So this is something to please keep in mind. We are at the College of Lake County Lakeshore Campus. Um, 111 North Genesee. There's a big sign on Genesee, so you just yeah, look for it. I saw that. Um, so we are there, we're happy to be there. Um, in the handouts, I have family hours. Um, we also have field trips for Waukeg Waukegan schools and childcare programs, and then other programs that qualify. So there's a contact information on there. But I wanna tell you just a little bit about our pop-up and what we have. So the goal of the pop-up is to really engage local families and school groups in high quality hands-on early learning experiences. And what we're focused on is what's called STEAM, that's science, technology, engineering, arts, and math. And so everything in the um, museum focuses on one of those areas with a little literacy um, in there as well because you can't forget good children's books. Um, so what we have in there is a full functioning art studio. We have our young paleontologist exhibit, so we're looking at fossils and dinosaurs. We have our tech play lab. We have programmable robots that you don't sit in front of a computer. You can actually program them and make them move around. Um, so we have Coda Pillars and we have B-Bots. Um, they're two great fun programmable robots for young children. We have our Build It exhibit, which is, um, includes Rigamajig, which if you have the images here, you can see a couple of the Waukegan firefighters who were there on Saturday playing with our kids, building. So it's a great building um, exhibit. Includes simple machines, gears and pulleys and ramps. Um, it's a lot of fun. 
We also have um, our book nook, like I mentioned, and a puppet stage, and a few other smaller exhibits. Um, so we hope everybody will come out, come visit us during our family hours. If you have a school group or a child care group, please make sure that you either get in touch with us through this, our website, or find me. Um, we would love to have you there. Admission is free, field trips are free, um, and we're here through the last week of March. So our last day will be March 21st. <laughs> Um, so we opened on February 1st, and we'll be here till March 21st. Um, council members, do you have any questions? Just thank you for being here again. Yeah, thank yeah. you. It's we're happy to be thing. here. We love coming and doing the pop-up. So. And, and just so we're clear with the new location, it's at uh, the Lakeshore campus mm -hmm. at COC. So those who do not know, we're 111 North. That's the Lakeshore campus at COC. And I think you already have a list of schools already. We're almost booked up. You're with almost schools. booked up. So we have some openings, um, but we we have pretty much been booking the schools nonstop yes. for a while. Now. Yeah, our so school district has really been participating with this uh, since day one. So we're. Uh, we're, we're really looking for this to be a long time, a long term relationship, and not just in Waukegan. Looks like you are now in North Chicago, in Round, Round Lake. Lake, Round Lake, the Beach. Round Lake area. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I'll just stop by this week and to drop that off for you. Okay, perfect. I also want to thank the rest of the community partners. So I thank Waukegan and the city of Waukegan for welcoming us. You were the first place we went to for a pop-up, so um, we're happy to be back again. But I also want to thank the fire department, as I mentioned. Um, the firefighters come out and hang out with the kids and engage with the families almost every Saturday family hours. Um, we are continuing to schedule our uh, officer story hours, so thank you to the police department. Um, they did a great job last year. We're scheduling those as well. Those will be announced. And the public library has been fantastic. Um, so they bring their resources out. Sometimes they'll have the children's library and come and read some stories. Um, so we really appreciate everybody in Waukegan being supportive. And um, we think it's a great community effort. So thank you. And, and I'm going to add, I know you will too, uh, your new partner uh, with your new home is Lakeshore Campus CLC. The so College of Lake County too. has been fantastic to us, so um, keep that in mind. But they have yeah. been wonderful. Yes, thank Thanks. you. Thanks. Thank you. All right. All right. Uh, anything else? Resolutions, proclamations, presentation. There being none. Audience time. Madam Clerk. Uh, we have a number of people t speaking tonight, so I'm going to call you up in groups of five. I'm going to call your name. Please go ahead and uh, go to the east side of the room. State your name. First up will be Brother Blanks, Dylan Burdett, Cornell Ford, Kim Ford, Jessica Barnett. Brother Blanks, Dylan Burdett, Cornell Ford, Kim Ford, Jessica Barnett. Three minutes. Power concedes to nothing without a demand. Frederick Douglass. Understanding the nature of fraternal of fraternities and their oath of brotherhood, service, and protection that they take for and amongst themselves first, such as the fraternal order of police and law enforcement. We are aware that city law enforcement and state's attorney's office are obligated to work with one another. However, <clears throat> we at Black Abolition Movement for the man, Mind demand a memorandum of understanding if you do not have one, or to be considered for reform if you do, outlining how the city will move forward with more independence, free of the Lake County, free of the Lake County State's Attorney, and in the best interest of the protection of the Waukegan citizens, constituents, and their rights thereof. We think Having a paramedic on hand when search warrants are issued is a good idea to start with in preservation of life. life. Also, although not legally obligated, when a situation advances from criminal to life-saving, handcuffs should be removed. It is the sensitive, sensible, and responsible thing to do, particularly when victims fall unconscious after telling you they can't breathe. We further demand all officers be trained or retrained in CPR and that it is immediately and effectively applied to all victims and suspects alike as needed as required by law. We 
uh, well-trained officers should not be found just waiting when paramedics arrive, but found implementing CPR and putting forth the best effort to preserve life at all costs because that is their job. Even if it means sticking their fingers in a victim's mouth to clear their airway. So we further demand that each and every law enforcement vehicle be required to have one box of latex gloves at um, at all times. According to a January news article, the mayor stated that he would like, he would be meeting with the police chief and fire department to determine some of these changes, but you did not say anything about meeting with the community. Mayor, we would like to see the city take it a step further with a town hall meeting here at City Hall, perhaps an opportunity to provide uh, to be provided to receive ideas from the community as well as an effort of community outreach. You cannot consider what is in the best interest of the community if you do not include the community. And finally, we would like the city to draft and outline these changes in a resolution between the city and citizens with a copy of said resolution to be presented to the Cotton family in a Waukegan City Council meeting. As for the further, as for further how the body camera footage will be handled, the IGA has informed me as well as the city alike, now that the body cam footage has been released, it Thank will you, not Blaise. file a motion to dismiss, but will go forward for us to have a day in court. Thank, Thank you, you for your time and your attention. Okay. Um, thank you all for letting me up here to speak. Um, Dylan, Dylan, Dylan oh, Burdett. Sorry, yeah, Dylan Burdett, sorry. Um, I, I don't have any notes with me today. I usually uh, have something prepared when I come up here. Um, but I'm here actually to, for a more personal reason today, and that's in support of Stretch. Um, it's been about a year since he came out asking the city for help, and it seems like his situation is just getting worse, uh, and that the city may be making it worse, or certain parties within the city government might be making it worse and engaging in some very targeted harassment against him at his place of business. Um, and he, this stretch is, and Stretch's place is a, is a good business and it's a strong business and it supports a lot of good things in the community. And I think that this is what city government is for, is to help people in times like this. Thank you. Thank you. Cornell Ford. You can go ahead. I have a backup. Go ahead. First and foremost, I want to say I support Stretch's Bar and Grill. It's, uh, first of all, the, the establishment, the establishment is an awesome establishment for this community. For African Americans, it's a place for us to go let down our hair, do poetry, listen to live music, and also this gentleman has lended his business to uh, do toy drives, all type of positive for the community, but it's really aggravating to see him have to post police walking around his establishment unwarranted with dogs and you know it's 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 a bad look on the city too you guys have made this man pay 20 grand that's almost discouraging if if he didn't have a level head and, and uh, support from the community he would have just folded but obviously he believes in something as does the community to keep supporting him. We believe in Stretch. Stretch is a good dude. Um, and I got a question for you guys. I was reading a published report in the uh, Chicago Tribune. It says that that property, <clears throat> now correct me if I'm wrong, that, that property is ultimately owned by the United Arab Emirates with the West, I think it's the Westmont, Westmont group that has a stake in it as well as the holding in it. My question is, why can't y'all do the proper business on that side to take care of that? Whatever that business is, 
and leave this man's business alone and quit harassing him because he's doing what he's supposed to do. He's paying taxes, he's paying whatever he needs to do, yet something on y'all end is uh, not being met obligation-wise, and you see what's going on. You guys need to, to really wake up and look at yourself because sending police to this man's business, practically bullying him. I've watched police walk in, and y'all don't know because y'all ain't out there, but police out here, they ain't right, man. <laughs> they ain't right. Some of the stuff that you hear them say, if we didn't have nothing to lose, we'll, we'll, be, uh, we'll be at war with some of these police. So I'm just letting y'all know, leave this man alone. I propose to my wife in this establishment. And when I want to go have a drink, listen to some live music, that's the place where I want to go. I don't know who's responsible for sending people to this man's establishment. Thank you, Leave Mr. Ford. Alone. Thank you. Kim King. Go ahead. Kim King Ford. I too support Stretch. I'm here, I'm one of many that support Stretch. And I don't have a speech to say, but I am here in support of Stretch, as a lot of you will see. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Jessica Barnett. Jessica Barnett. Go ahead, ma'am. I'm here tonight just to say that I support stretches. Our goal is to be a positive influence in the community and to give our community somewhere to go, to relax and to have fun and when it's necessary to be there for people when they need things, their family needs things. We hold read passes, we hold volunteer, all kind of volunteer work. We support our community and our community is supporting us. Our problem is not with the community. Our problem is with the city. I just would like to say, please stop. Whatever it is, please stop. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, the next five are, and I'm going to need a little bit of help because I can't read it. Patricia, but I don't have a last name. Oh, okay. Patricia, Eugene Banks, Lisa Casey, Paul Adams. Now I'm at a loss. Patel? Is there Patel? Somebody wrote something here. I can't read it. Before Dirk Ohm? No. Okay, so we have uh, Patricia. Patricia Weshteti. So I just want to say to everyone, I'm here to support Stretches as well, backbone of our community, all of the good things that they support and share, helping others. So many things that people don't know about, food drives, clothing drives, homeless, everything, everything. But I do want to say this, a quote from Albert Einstein, the world will not be destroyed by those who do evil, but by those who watch them without doing anything. That's the problem. Support stretches. Thank you. Eugene Banks. Hey, how y'all doing today? What's up, Coach Mozio? <laughs> Eugene. How y'all doing? How you doing, Sam and everybody else up there? And of course, I'm here to say that I support Stretch as well. Been a good friend to me and a good friend to the whole community. There's only a tenth of the people that really want to come down. And uh, it's, like, it's not that we just support them. Now we're starting to get scared for them. Because when you got police coming around, a legal black businessman, you know, we get out the streets to, to get away from police dogs and harassment and whatnot. So we got the only, one of the only black men I know that has his own business, and he being harassed like he's selling dope. Then now I'm getting concerned about it. When is it gonna be the time where they come in with an attitude and wanna say that he tried to reach for a gun or something? So, 
we here to support him. We love him. He do a lot for the community, more than he can even name or post. And I wasn't going to miss coming here for the world. I wanted to make sure that y'all know that we, we got eyes on what's happening right now with him. And we don't want to see anything bad happen to him just for trying to run his business, you know. And speaking of running the business, I had my own business for 12 years, my t-shirt shop. We don't get a lot of support in community from the city. Usually they go to the big corporations for their business, but they won't come to us for what we do and what we provide and whatnot, if you even knew that I had a business here for 12 years as a felon. And thank God I started it because if I didn't, I don't think I'd be getting employed right now. I had to go and start my own business in order for me to maintain my, you know. But uh, other than that, we definitely, definitely support Stretch. And we worried about him. And please make sure them officers don't, do, don't take it too far. All right? Y'all take care. Thank you. Lisa Casey. Lisa Casey, I am also here to support Stretch. Um, I just want to point out, Stretch is not just a, a black owned or a black bar. It's a community. It's a family. All nationalities, all races, none of us come in there and feel as though we are not wanted. Um, Stretch has opened his home. I call it his home because it might as well be his home. He lives there. Um, to the community, I have probably seen over half of you in his establishment as well. Um, they have been there with the elite striders. They come in to practice. We've done campaigns. We've done house. Uh, we've done warming centers for the homeless, coat drives, um, fundraisers for people who's lost their homes. Um, numerous things I could go on and on with this list, but I just wanted to say I am too worried about his safety. Um, it's becoming undone in complete harassment. Tell them what you want him to do conform by law what he needs to do, and speak with the man and stop harassing him. Coming and doing what, he, what they're doing to the establishment is kind of to the point now where if we, 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 don't want, we don't want anything to happen to him. He's our family. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Paul Adams. Is Good evening, Paul Adams. <clears throat> I hear, I, I don't want to take up too much time. I just want to let... My big brother know I love him. He's done a lot for me. I've been going through a lot. My family's been going through a lot. I don't want to take up too much time. I support Stretch. Thank you. And your name, sir? Robert Lilo. Oh, thank you. Um, I support Stretch's Bar and Grill. Uh, I was born and raised here. Uh, I moved to North Carolina, then I moved back uh for family problems and got up with my high school buddy and we went to his bar he opened his arms to uh to me as a friend as a family and that's the place i would not mind being on my days off I, and that stuff so just i do support him and i'm behind him 100 percent all right <laughs> The next five, Dirk Ohm, Rita Mayfield, Kirsten Barnett, Diamond Coleman, Waukegan J-R-T-C, J-A-R-O-T-C, J-R-O-T-C. Is somebody talking? Oh. You guys one signed speaker, up? All, Is come somebody up. speaking? Yes. Okay. One speaker, but all of them are coming. Okay. So the first one will be Dirk Ohm. I am Dirk Ohm. Uh, I'm here to support stretches. Uh, stretch, you know, we go back a long ways, and I consider him family, you know, and he opens his doors to our family when in our time of need, and he does everything he can good for the community. He's an honest man trying to make an honest living. He doesn't deserve to be harassed. Thank you. Thank you. Honorable Rita Mayfield. Thank you so much. I definitely support Stretch. You know, uh, Maurice has been just a staple in the community. He's done so much there. Um, just love him to death. So I'm just really hoping we can resolve this issue. You know, I'm willing to help facilitate whatever it takes to sit down or whatever, just so that we can resolve this so that we don't continue to have um, 
these type of misunderstandings. And then uh, secondly, I would like to invite everybody out to the Waukegan Library on Tuesday, February 18th from si uh, 5 to 7. Treasurer Holly Kim and I will be having an interactive drum circle. So come learn the history of the uh, drums uh, from West Africa. We will have an authentic person there who will be telling the story of the drums and uh, providing our children with uh, what the different drum beats mean. So just come out and join us, and thank you. Support time Stretch. <laughs> Rita. What, what's the time, Rita? Five to seven. What was the date again? February 18th. Waukegan Library, Interactive Drum Circle, 5 to 7. It's a Tuesday. It's going to be fun. Uh, Kirsten Barnett. Kirsten Barnett, I'm here to support stretches, and I'd just like to say my whole life I've watched my father support this community. Any business, venture he does, he makes sure he does it in this community. He makes sure it benefits this community. He makes sure they know that he is here for them, that he stands for them. So to see that community or that city turn its back on him and just, just discredit everything he does and try to undercut him, it's just, I hate to watch it and I hate seeing my father so stressed out when all he deserves is positively and the love that he gives out return to him. So whatever it is, I just pray that it's resolved, and I pray that you look inside yourself and realize that he is not the enemy. He is only beneficial to the city. Thank you. Thank you. Diamond Coleman. Diamond Coleman. Diamond Coleman. Bring the mic up to you, buddy. There you go, buddy. Okay, there you go. Uh, I'm here in regards to Stretch's Bar and Grill to show my support. Um, as a 23-year-old uh, young guy in the city, um, to speak for the rest of the young fellow gentlemen out here in the um, city, we look we look up to Stretch. We appreciate everything he does for the community. We we uh, enjoy coming to the bar and having drinks and you know just having a fun a fun time. Uh, we hate to see that things can't be resolved in a nice respectable way, you know, and we, we fear for, for worse, and we, we like to see everything get resolved. Uh, you guys have a good day. Thank you. Waukegan J-R-O-T-C. Please state your name. Um. Hold the mic down. There you go. Um, Waukegan JRTC. Um, good evening, Mayor Cunningham, Alderman, and community. My name is Ashley Carillo. My name is Jaime Contreras. My name is James Ronda. My name is Louis Miranda. Uh, my name is Isam Husseini. My name is Reina Rivera. My name is Abigail Aguilar. My name is Andrea Torres. My name is Jair Aquino. <laughs> And my name is Van Weddle. Uh, we're all a part of the JRTC program here at the Waukegan High School. We're all here to represent the JRTC program, and we're extending an invitation to all those present, all those present, and to the rest of the community. Alongside with the school board member, Ms. Lucy Legazamo, we have organized an event to make a mass production of Valentine cards to honor those who have served and those that are currently serving our country. We will be hosting this event on February the 9th. Sunday over at the Brookside Campus Gym from 2 to 5 p.m. All these cards will be headed to Veterans Closet who will then send these cards around to VAs. We're hoping to have as many of you from the community to come out and support. Please consider there are many from the Waukegan community who are out serving, serving and many who have served our country. You'll never know if these cards will end up in the laps of previous Waukegan students as well. These cards will first be distributed over the VA here in North Chicago and then distribute to other service members across, across the nation. Again, on behalf of Waukegan High School JOTC program, we appreciate your time and we cannot wait to see you there. Please help us by promoting this event to the community. Thank you. Thank you. Um, after
after hearing everyone speak today so highly about Stretch, we also want to say that we um, support them and their cause. Thank you. The next five names, Rico Edwards, Yashin Phillips, Carolyn Barnett, Jack Wheaton, Ashanti Barnett. Rico Edwards, Yashin Phillips, Caroline Barnett, Jack Wheaton, Ashanti Barnett. Good evening, Rico Edwards. I'm here to support Stretch. I'm new to the Lake County area, and I lost my son uh, a couple of months ago. He reached out and called and opened up his half of his um, establishment for me to hold a passing for my, my, my son. Nobody has ever done that for my family. You know, for him to open up his, his business, for me to have my friends, my families celebrate the life of my son. Thank you, Stretch. Hopefully you will get over this. Stop bullying this man. He is here for us. Thank you, Yashin Phillips. I hope this doesn't count for my time, but my name is Yashin. You know me. <laughs> Yashin. I even put the little mark I, above the I could the have a. said Inchwim. You could have said that, too. I'll take that. Um, but uh, I hope everybody is having a good time tonight. Um, unfortunately, we're not. <laughs> My name is Yashin Inchworm Phillips. I'm the host of the Inchworm Show. Um, I'm also a member of the hashtag Just Do It underscore Vote Coalition. And that's where we get the millennials out. We educate them about voting, and also we encourage them to vote. Um, my mission with what I do is to start the conversation about things that are going on in the community. Uh, I do support Stretch. Stretch has helped me out tremendously, as well as the other people here in the community. Um, but tonight, I just want to put it out there. Um, I, I, I'm plugging my show, but I also want to make it known that I, I, I want to hear from the city. I want, it, I want a conversation to be had, because everybody can come up here, and we can state our claim, we can say this, we can say that, but we need to hear back from the other side to see what exactly is going on. So I want to open up my platform to do that. Um, so I'll be here afterwards. You can reach out to me, um, because Stretch has done, he is such a pillar in the community. I said it. I was here a year ago, actually, saying this, and now I'm here again. Um, unfortunately, it has to be under these circumstances, but I feel like I have a responsibility here and as a leader in the community. Um, so please, if there's anyone from the city who would like to come on the show, we also have uh, the, the hashtag just do it underscore vote coalition has something called off the porch. And this is where the millennials talk about the issues that are going on in the city. So everybody talks about how the millennials aren't doing anything. Well, we're doing something. We, we're active. We want to know what's going on. We want to start that conversation. So I just want to thank you, Stretch, for doing everything that you do uh, for the community. And thank you, community, for doing what you do. But we, we need some answers on both ends. Thank you so much. Thank you. Carolyn Barnett. There you go. Hi, I'm Carolyn Barnett. I'm Stretch's mother. My son is a good man. He's done, he opened up this business so that he could help and support people, which is what he's been doing for the last couple of years that he's been open. He has been getting so much backlog from the city. I don't know what's going on. But you all are making me afraid that something might happen to my baby. And I ask you, please, whatever it is, sit down, tell him what we need to do, and stop this police running in and out. The dogs, we don't need that. He doesn't need that. They're stressing him. My son is a good man. And I just ask you all to please sit down, find out what he needs to do, and let him have his business. It's there not just for him to make money. It's been there for him to be able to help people, and that's what he's been doing. 
I go in and I help up until I got sick. They call me Mama Stretch, and <laughs> I love it. I love going in there and, and being with these young people, and they don't disrespect me. They respect me, and they respect each other. So it's not a juke joint, or it's not a hangout for gang bangers. It's a place for young people to go and have a good time. So please, leave my baby alone. Let him have his business. Thank you. Jack Wheaton. Hello, my name is Jack Wheaton. I'm also an up and coming owner. I own Incognito Ink Tattoo in Pearson Paul and Winthrop Harbor. I had to go all the way out there because I sat down with you and I didn't get any help from anybody. So I, I was even told by the building department, hey, you might as well go check somewhere else. I had to go all the way to Winthrop Harbor. And I fully support Stretch. I look up to him. I look at the things he does. That's why I also opened my doors to a program that you had at your school for kids to try to show them art and different things. That's exactly what he's doing. I do, when I first moved here, coming out of the Navy 13 years ago, I was told this was a place of change. And I really see that. I could only imagine how I would feel if I had dogs and stuff around my business. I've been in business now maybe five months. And I look up, I look to him and the things he does and only see all the promise and change that can come. So if y'all could, let this man do his business and help out this community. We don't have many of it. I've been married 18 years and I'm very protective of my, my marriage. This is the only place I feel comfortable taking my wife in this whole area. So that should tell you something. Thank you. Thank you. Ashanti Barnett. Hello. Um, I first would like to say I do as well support stretches. Um, for the past month, we've seen so many different obstacles thrown at my father, and he's attacked them because he's a strong man, and he believes in his business. He believes in his community. Um, he has a lot of people that support him, and at the end of the day, um, I just want the city to realize that Stretches Sports Bar and Girls is not just a nightclub. It's not just a bar. It's a place that a lot of people call home. A lot of places don't have where you can call everyone family. And that's pretty much what the establishment is. And I just, like I said, I just want the city to please just open your eyes and realize that that 200 North Green Bay Road is not just a profitable property. It's a place for people to call home and it's a business that we need to keep going for generations and generations to come and to stop looking at him as an enemy, but more as a role model for the city of Waukegan because he has done so much for the city, not just for himself, but for everyone as well in, in the community. So like I said, just please just listen to him, listen to what has to be done. And he's everything you've thrown at him, he's taken care of. And at this point, it's pretty disgusting to watch um, him be destroyed. Um, I don't like getting emotional, but my dad has worked so hard. He's invested so much time, energy, effort. And to watch you guys try to take something away from him unlawfully is disgusting to watch. He has grandchildren. He has children. He has a mother. He has a wife that we look for him to be able to have this business open every day. We look to him for a lot of different things that you guys look overlook and oversee. And I just want the harassment to stop because it's not fair to him. Here, that's it. Thank you, Ms. Barnett. The last group will be Quanisha Branch, Carlos Smith, Mary Blair Moore, Maurice Barnett, Clyde McLemore, and Margaret Carrasco. Quanisha Branch, Carlos Smith, Mary Blair Moore, Maurice Barnett, Clyde McLemore, Margaret Carrasco. Good evening. My name is Quanisha Branch. I'm also here to support Stretchers Bar and Grill. Um, it just saddens me because not only Stretch is my uncle, he's always been the rock of the family. Since his business been open, he's been a rock to many people. Like, he has a lot on his shoulder, but he carries it very, very, very well. Um, 
I shouldn't read, I, I mean, I don't have to repeat every, everybody and already said it. Like the harassment is just overwhelming, stressful, and it saddens us because like they say, this is not just a bar or a nightclub. It's a place where everyone goes to relax. It's home. That's the only place I go. That's the only place I feel comfortable. And not only me, but a lot of people. So like I said, I'm here to support my uncle Stretch. Thank you. Carlos Smith. All right. Carlos Smith, the Crazy Ride Show, number one show in Lake County. No, I'm joking. Um, it's a little joke between me and Inchmore. Um, this situation is kind of difficult because I would hate to think that a city would come together or anybody within a city would come together to try to block somebody from running a business, right? That, that's hard for maybe the regular person to say, well, that's not true. Well, I spoke to Zion School Board District about something uh, last year where they decided to let their students make up a snow day on MLK Day. And they, they changed that rule, but the one thing I told them was, I understand that you wanted to make the day up, but how that looks is crazy, right? Um, and the principal behind, Mar behind Martin Luther King obviously is way bigger than that. But how this looks is crazy, right? Now the truths are wherever they are, right? But we have to get to a place to where that conversation is had so that we no longer are talking like this because this seems like it's all the way over there and then stretches all the way over here. It needs to be like this. Because if more people keep coming up here and saying this, how it looks on you guys is crazy. And I hate to keep using the word crazy so loosely, but this will continue to trend. Um, we, we get excited when things happen like this, unfortunately. Well, my people, we, we like this type of stuff. Oh, well, let's get to it. We like to turn up and scream and yell about a situation like this, but it is real. Stretch is a real guy. He does real things for everybody in the neighborhood, myself included, for real, for real. And he know. So what we have to do it, and it's kind of like you guys are undervaluing his power. I'm going to say that again, undervaluing his power. Because how it looks, now the truths are where they are. And no one knows, and we hear it stretch his side, because he expresses certain things to the people that are close to him. But as Yeshin says, we need to hear the other one so that we can marry that and come up with a solution. That's what we need right now. Because the city council, you can't, you don't want to take on what would happen if everybody said, okay, y'all gonna keep doing this in the summer? It's gonna be crazy. We don't want that. Because like I said, my people, my, my, my black folks, we like this stuff. And we had turn up just because it's a good, exciting situation and they love stretch. So to, to ratify this, do it just on the basis of protecting the integrity of this section. I'm done. Thank you so much. Thank you. Mary Blair Moore. Mary Moore. Mary Blair Moore, Waukee, Illinois. First of all, let me say that I, too, support Stretch's Bar and Grill. I've sat here and I've listened to all of the accolades given to Stretch tonight, and I would be remiss if I sat there and did not say anything. Because as you can see, I am not a millennial. <laughs> I don't frequent Stretch's Bar, but I know Stretch, and I know him for good character, for the good character that he is. He is also a person who constantly uplifts his community. He's not one that drags it down. He gives back. And he lets you know that this is how he came up. So he's giving back to his community. So why would we not let him continue to do that? And then next of all, the numerous donations and the many charitable uh, adventures that he's done just from Stretch's Bar. But let me tell you one thing. I salute him as a man of integrity one of good character, and I think that he should be treated as such. Thank you. Thank you. Maurice Barnett. Maurice Barnett, 
stretch. First of all, thank everyone for those compliments. Everybody like to say stretch is a strong man, but I'm actually pretty weak because I put on this mask to show strength, knowing that it's killing me to be here. I opened stretches with the intentions, because for one, it was a dream, a lifelong dream to one day have my own establishment, my own bar and grill and restaurant. So me and my wife discussed it since what, she was 14, I was like 16 years old, and here I am, 49, I won't say her age, but figure it out. Um, it's gotten to a point, like they said, I try to be strong, but the reality is I do get nervous now at two, three, four in the morning when it's time to leave. I get nervous because I watch on my cameras the police constantly swarming. Sometimes they have the lights on, sometimes the lights are out. I watched them and I got video of them going inside of the windows of a hotel versus a door. I keep those documented, I keep those videos. I watch the dog sniff my back door by my kitchen. I watch an officer shake a window that's boarded up. For what? You just saw it's boarded up. I watched him go shake it a second time after reaching over. Not wondering, now I'm wondering, did he put something in there? Is this something setting me up again? What's going on? Why? Why do they keep coming back? I watched him just last night come in when I asked, is there a problem? And four officers, two go one way, the other goes the, the other two go a separate direction. When I say, is there something wrong? Is there a problem? And they move me out of the way and continue and, and, and grab a young man and, and cuff him and pull him out. I watch myself close those doors 20, 25 minutes later, about 25 minutes before the normal closing hour because I just felt like it was enough. I watched them on the camera stay outside and watch everybody leave only to come back and beat on my door, or not beat on my door, a little exaggerate, knock on the door, I unlock the door, and he says, well, you're in violation of your liquor license. Uh, we want to do a check. And they, they asked for permission, asked me for ID. I said, no, you know who I am. I'm not giving you an ID. But then they later say, well, you, after a, a little conversation, said you did us a favor by violating your liquor license laws by not allowing us to do this walkthrough. So I look and I say, well, you guys been here. You walked through without speaking to me a little while ago. So why is it now any different? So they walk in, take a look, and all they see is a few people cleaning up and a bunch of chairs on the table. And then he decides to walk away and say, you did us a favor. You didn't allow us to come in. It's like, so what am I supposed to do? Thank you, Mr. Barnett. Thank you. Yeah. Clyde McLemore. Clyde McLemore founder of the Lake County chapter of Black Lives Matter. I'm not a drinker, so I don't freaking uh, stretches. But I have been up there at some of his fundraisers. I even gave a coat off my back. He's only one place that I seen homeless people are welcome there to go eat at. And I came in and I think well, we saw a guy there didn't have a winter coat, it was cold. It was Last year, and I gave a coat off my back, you know, and I figure I got a warm car, I got heat in my car, I can go get a coat, you know, that ain't no problem. You know, uh, we was here last year, the same issue, same issue last year, and this is your district. You need to go over the stretches and find out, sit down with, with, with Stretch and see if y'all can get, iron this out, please. I'm not coming to the mayor, I'm coming to you. You, that, you the older woman, that's your district. Can you do that? I, I leave that there. Uh, there's been some signs that's been popping up around Lake County. Reparation is a positive solution. The economic divert, we, we all win. That, that sign has been going around Waukegan. I know y'all probably seen it. If you haven't, you will be seeing them because I got about 100 more of them to put out. Um, <clears throat> but um, there's a reparations town hall meeting going on here at the Waukegan Library on February the 22nd from 1.30 to 4 o'clock. Uh, I asked y'all to attend. I asked everybody here to attend that event. Uh, we just did it again. We did it in North Chicago. 
Uh, there's a bill, a state bill that's going through. Our state rep is one of the co-signers, co sponsors on that bill. I've been in Springfield. I was in Springfield with the state to state, and we've been really lobbying this bill to get this done on our reparations. And I ask y'all to come out and hear what's going on on the federal level, the state level, and hopefully we can get it in the city level. I'm going to leave you this flyer. I only brought one, y'all, but uh, I know a lot of y'all seen it on Facebook, but I'm going to leave it for the, for the, for the y'all uh, archives. That's all I got. Thank you. Margaret Carrasco. Good evening. Um, after hearing everyone speak tonight, my words are going to be directed to Stretch and all his supporters, including myself. Um, something that you need to know. So meanwhile, I, well, first of all, let me just start saying that I assure you, the cops going there with the dogs, all that, that comes from the top. Okay, let's not fool ourselves. It is what it is. Um, so tonight I brought with me a document. One order, Mr. Mayor, I'd like to ask that the Would you stop being racist and also address. against treating have respect for females? That she should address okay. the Okay, you notice every law. other person that's not Thank Latina, you. he didn't say anything, okay? Well, I'm gonna just continue on, okay? Because um, I don't have respect for ignorant men. Okay, so I have report number 2019-06128. So meanwhile, they're doing that, trying to find something and harassing stretches. On this day, on June 23rd, when a Waukegan cop was stopped, because he was driving 70 miles per hour, and when the officer, the county sheriff, asked him to take a sobriety test, he said, I didn't really want to. And his statement to the cop was, Waukegan cop, I'm not the drunkest I've ever been. That's what the Waukegan cops stated, okay? And then when they asked if he had a gun, he said, yeah, it's in the glove department. And then he went on to say that he had a knife too, but nothing was done. He, the handcuffs, handcuffs were removed and he was let go. So you see, we have this uneven. Meanwhile, they're harassing you. We have people who are clearly doing a felony violation and nothing's done. But let's take it a step further. I also have the documents, file number 7625167, in which on January 2nd, this is a property located at 4368 West Hill Avenue, Mayor, in which I did some comparables on it, and they show a property right around the corner that's worth $200,000. This property was purchased years ago for $160,000, but the mayor bought it for only $50,000. In closing, I've said it once and I'll say it again. The Waukegan minority community has never experienced disrespect, that was just demonstrated right now, corruption, harassment, for minority business owners, un like under Sam Cunningham. No other mayor has disrespected us and harassed us the way you have. And yes, never other, any other mayor has disrespected and harassed the African American community as under Mayor Sam Cunningham. Thank you, Ms. Shameful. Margaret. Thank you. Mayor, that concludes the public time. If anyone wants to leave, you can. We'll give you a couple minutes. Okay. Item four, consent agenda. Motion, uh, motion by Alderman Mozio, second by Alderman Taylor. For consent agenda items A, through M. There's a motion and a second on the floor. Do we want to get anything off of that? Uh, Alderman Newsom. Um, Finance Committee did not meet this evening, so items G will come out. Item H will come out. Okay. So items G and H. Are there any other items? 
So there's a motion on the floor. There's a motion, there's a first and second for items 4A through F, then items 4I through M. Are there any other questions? I'll read them off. Motion to approve regular meeting minutes from Tuesday, January 21st, 2020. Motion authorized proper city official to settle police department workers' compensation claim 201802070001 for the total amount of 140000 Motion authorized proper city official to execute a dedication agreement for the section of George Avenue located uh, between the 500 block of South Martin Luther King Avenue and the 500 block of Oak Street. Motion to adopt as presented the ordinance amending Chapter 21 Handicap Parking, Persons Parking. Motion to adopt items E, a motion to adopt as presented the ordinance amending Chapter 21, the limited parking two hours, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. on Washington Street, both sides, Belvedere Road, Belvedere Road South to a point of 124 feet south. Item F, most to approve a resolution declaring surplus property, including specific parcels of real estate identified by the city staff as obsolete for the city of Waukegan use, and to authorize proper city officials to conduct the necessary activities to identify and negotiate their transfer. Item I, most to approve a vendor payments dated February the 3rd, 2020, a total amount of $2,380,653.10. Item J, motion to approve regular payroll dated January 31st, 2020, and a total amount of $1,606,337.28. Item K, motion to approve retro Garcia, correction, motion to approve uh, Juan Garcia dated January 17, 2020, total amount of $699.72. Item L, most to approve PBLC holiday buyback date dated January 31st, 2020, a total amount of $1,163.59. Item M, motion to approve retro Quentin Stern dated January 31st, 2020, and a total amount of $48.58. Correction, $48.53. Any other questions? Ro roll call, please. Alderman Bolton. Aye. Alderman Seeger. Aye. Alderman Mosio. Aye. Alderman Kirkwood. Aye. Alderman Newsom. Aye. Alderman Turner. Aye. Alderman Rivera. Aye. Alderman Florian. Aye. Alderman Taylor. Aye. Motion is passed and carried. There have been no reports and communication. Item 5. Item 6. Government Operations Oversight Committee. There being none. Item 7. Community Development Committee. That's me, Your Honor. Uh, Alderman Mozio. Yeah, item A, we have decided to table that till a uh, date to be determined. Okay. We would like to try to button up this video gaming, as many loose strings as we have about it. Mm -hmm. um, we talked to the committee uh, about maybe what to do. I'm going to put out there right now what my thoughts are on it. Yes, sir. What any other aldermen's are. Since we, um, I'm a, I'm a agreeing to give anybody who wants a six machine a six machine but then i would like a moratorium on any other businesses i would not want to grant any more video gaming licenses after that that way that takes care of that whole distance thing right there you don't have you don't have a worry about the distance because you're not going to give any more machines out <laughs> until we can figure out what's going to happen with the casino um the licensing fee um, I would like to, and I don't know that we can legally, we, you and I have talked about it, Corporation Council, can I even talk about that or is it, you know? There are some issues about some of the proposals I've heard. I'd, I'd like to hear, what I'd like to do is hear your proposals. Well, my proposal is just like everything else in this country, the more money you make off the machine, the more you pay. In other words, if I'm a bar, a restaurant, or whatever, and I've got three machines and I'm not making anything, I'm not making what Thornton's is making. Anybody, the, the gaming revenue is on a website. It's public knowledge. You can see it. It's for everybody to look at. <clears throat> okay, so you know what every establishment is making on the machines. So I would like to have it some type of graduated. If you make this much, you pay this much per licensed machine. That's the only thing that the city of Waukegan has in their jurisdiction is how much we charge as a licensing fee per machine. Right now it's at $1,000. All right, we, we, get no, we have no other say in anything else. Everything else is governed by the state. The, the business gets their money, the, uh, the terminal operator gets hit their money, the state gets their money, and then we're last. And then we get a, a little bit. 
So the only way that we can generate any money is by the licensing fee. But I don't want to make the licensing fee so high that it hurts the business owners. That's not fair either. But if you're making money hand over fist like a couple of them are, then you can afford to pay a little bit more for the licensing fee. That's my thought on it. I don't know how anybody else feels. That's what I would like to see. If, if, if that's possible, that's what we have to have Corporation Council look into to see if that is legally possible. I don't know. So with that being said, that's going to be held over. We're going to try to get together and the committee members are going to email me what they would like. Any other aldermen can also email me or call me on what they would like because we need to get, we've had this, we've been going round and round and round, chasing our tail on this forever. So we need to get this straightened out. Uh, item B, uh, motion to adopt as presented an ordinance approving and ratifying video gaming license for BS Waukegan LLC DBA Lucky Bernie's and I so move. Uh, motion by Alderman, motion by Alderman uh, Mozio, second by Alderman. It was coming off. You said you we have an explanation on that one, please. Yeah. Oh yeah. M uh, second. Motion uh, second by uh, sec there's a second by Alderman Turner. The explanation is. I can try. I don't really know that I yeah, understand that. You go ahead. The, uh, it, th this has taken them a while. They applied. They had this in 18, I guess. And was that wasn't going to be a deli, and they were going to have gaming machines, and it's it just coming before us now. It's it's sort of thing. Yeah, they, in 19 or in 2017, they applied for the uh, to the city to for preliminary approval to site their business, and a part of their original proposal was uh, a deli, a liquor license, and video gaming. Correct. And at that time, they were con they were told go ahead and do it. They invested the money and uh, went ahead, got the special, got the conditional use permit for, uh, through the uh, planning and zoning board process, and got that ordinance. They got the ordinance for the liquor license that approved them at such time as the uh, as they were given a uh, certific certificate of occupancy. Somewhere in this, it was missed that they. Uh, that the video gaming license wasn't formally approved, and that's all this does. They've been in operation there for a while now. Okay. Mm -hmm. all right. I, I thought we were holding this over. We could okay. hold it over too. No, A, A, all A, A is A. being held over. Item B. Tabled. A is being no. tabled. Okay, I was told something different, but okay. Item B is. Uh, we voted on it in committee, but if you want to. Yeah, this do it, actually. I don't know. The, the, you, you can if you'd like. That's your prerogative, certainly. Yeah, this one right here, uh, and I, I, this was a lengthy conversation uh, during 20, late 2017. Uh, it actually was before the new alderman even took, uh, took their seats, and uh, it opened with the intent of that. Uh, one of the reasons it was approved and accepted is because of the location. I don't, uh, Delaney Road was the only facility there, and um, that was the reason why it was uh, they moved there or they opened up that, that establishment. And uh, I can assure you, uh, we talked about it. I don't know how the word, uh, the license machines, that the gambling the video gaming license did not get included when we issued the uh, liquor license. So this is, as it says, ratifying exactly what, we're, what our intent was and the reason why the, the business went over there. And that was, that's, the short end of it. But if, you know, again, if anybody wishes to hold it over, that's, and we've talked about that, that's, that's your prerogative, not something that, it's not a yeah, legal I, issue. I think that's one, this one right here, this was, that was missed back then. So uh, I think we need to move ahead and move, move forward and, and, and vote on this. Okay? Any questions? Alderman? Oh. All right, roll call, please. Alderman Bolton. Aye. Alderman Seeger. Aye. Alderman Mosio. Aye. Alderman Kirkwood. Aye. Alderman Newsom. Nay. Alderman Turner. Aye. Alderman Mavira. Nay. Alderman Florian. No. Alderman Taylor. Aye. Motion's passed and carried. Thank you, Alderman. Uh, Special Finance and Purchasing Committee. The well, that was no, nothing. All right. No meetings, that was canceled. No, all right. So uh, items 8A through B, uh, 
taken out. They were taken off because there was no committee to discuss. Uh, item, I, item 9, uh, old business. Uh, there's a motion by, there'll be a motion by Alderman Kirkwood, second by Alderman Newsom. Uh, motion to authorize Corporation Council to finalize uh, uh, and the mayor sign the agreement between Hispanic American Co uh, Construction Industry, HACIA, for the rental office at 100 North Martin Luther King Jr. Avenue. Uh, any other questions to the motion? So this one is, uh, this is a lease agreement. So we need, what, seven votes to pass that one? No. No, this isn't a long term lease. This no. is a short term lease. So you only need uh, so majority. Good. So I looked up uh, 65 ILCS 5 slash 1, or 5 slash 11 dash 76 dash 1, et cetera, et cetera. It says through here that it requires a lease of uh, property requires three-fourths vote of the council. And though we have nine members, I think that would work out to seven, right? I believe that applies only to long-term leases of more than 20 years, if I recall correctly. No, that... Uh, that's down a little further there, Bob. Tell you what, why don't we do this? Why don't we table this uh, for further discussion? And Because I'd like to be clear on what we're doing, why we're doing it, and how many votes are needed to uh -oh. do it. Alderman, we're going to bring it back up for next council, and I'll have an answer for you, okay? Thank you, Alderman. I'll get you an answer. Next okay, time. we get an answer. But it, it, I, and I, I hear what you're saying, but... For anything over 20 years, I, I understand what you're saying, sir, but anything over 20 years, that's what it was in for. Believe me, I've looked that up several times when it came in for the, when we're going back for the gaming, for, correct, for the casino, because it was an idea that came out for 20 years of leasing. That was specific as to that. But, you know, let's, you know, let's get this up and down. These, uh, this is an organization that we believe that's going to benefit. It says right here, Sam, it says, this power shall be exercised by an ordinance passed by three-fourths of the corporate authorities of the city or village then holding office at a regular meeting. That's this meeting. I'm part of the corporate authority, Alderman. Yes, we all are. I, when I say that, I mean I get to vote on it. Uh, yeah, let's let's clear it up. We'll clear up the next Alderman and we'll get it passed. Yes or no? Sounds good, sir? Sounds good to me. Thank you, sir. Thank, Thank you. you. All right. Item is held to next council meeting. Item, there's none for 10, 11, uh, item 12. Alderman's time. Madam Clerk. Alderman Bolton. Yes, I just want to thank the community for their public comments, and I pray that we can get our issues resolved, and I believe it will. Thank you. That'll be it. Alderman Seeger. I'd like to remind uh, the public, everybody, including myself, <laughs> even with my cane, <laughs> uh, we got snow in the forecast and freezing rain. So I'm asking everybody to try and cooperate, cooperate with public works. I know my snow plow drivers, they, they work hard and uh, it's, it's for us, you know. If you see a plow coming, get out there and move your car or truck, you know. Try to help the driver. We would appreciate it very much. And uh, slow those cars and trucks down, please. There's, don't, don't forget about the kids, you know, with the ice and snow, they're out playing too. So have some, some regards on, on that too. And have, a, have a, all of you have a good evening. Thank you. Alderman Mosio. Yeah, this might, might not be brief, but I will try to make it brief. Um, we as a society, I, I feel, have become desensitized but too sensitive. Um, you know, the high schools have been in the paper lately for acts of, I don't know what the word I'm looking for, some, some of it's violence, some of it's just fights. Um, and we can't have the two most dangerous places, or one of the two most dangerous places we have is the two high schools. Now, a lot of them are isolated incidents. I'm at the Washington campus. It's not dangerous. I don't feel afraid to go to school to teach there. I never have. Uh, but we can't allow that to continue to happen. As you saw, we have the uh, ROTC kids here. All the time we talk about, you know, kid gets in trouble and we can't do this, we can't do that. Well, what about 
the effects that, that his act, or her act, had on the rest of the kids in the school in the classroom. That, that it doesn't happen in a bubble or in a vacuum. So kids see that, that violence in school, they become desensitized, they become traumatized, et cetera, et cetera. So we need to do something about that. Because we, I, th I think all far too often we forget about the victims. And the victims may not be someone that actually is the person that gets physically hurt, but if they witness it, that can be traumatizing to them. And kids tell me that. They're tired of that. They're tired of it. The good kids are tired of it. Anybody ever see the show called The Wire on HBO? It's one of the greatest shows ever written, <laughs> by far. If you haven't watched it, you need to watch it. But it's straight. There's a scene in there, one of the guys is a captain or a corporal or whatever, but he's got a community meeting. And <coughs> I'm not, I was gonna read it, but it, it, it might not be apropos, but He's talking about this, they're having troubles, and he's, sent, he's talking about this. And never, anybody ever heard about juking the stats? Yeah. <laughs> okay, juking the stats means you can make stats be whatever they are. And in the school district situation, it could be suspension, expulsion, detentions, behavior problems, all of that. In our situation, it would be arrests, it could be you know, traffic stops, it could be anything like that. I've never not one time asked the chief of police what our stats are. I've never judged a, a, a chief of police by what the stats are. Just as I wouldn't want anybody in my classroom to judge me on my failure rate. Because I could, you're gonna tell me you're gonna judge me on my failure rate? Ain't nobody failing. It wouldn't be that hard to fudge. So my point to all of this is, is that we need to wake up and sometimes the statistics aren't what they really are. They've been juked and it's human nature. It doesn't happen only in here and walking. We all, you're always reading about stats getting juked. Why? Because people believe that all oh, the data, the data, the data. Well, the data can say anything that the person wants it to say that's in charge of the data. So at the end of this thing, let me see if I can find it real quick. Uh, let's see, I, I'm sorry. Um, a guy asks him a question and, he, and, and the police officer says back, he says, uh, the, the person says, so what's the answer? And the captain says, well, I'm not sure, but whatever it is, it can't be a lie. Thank you. Alderman Kirkwood. Thank you, Madam Clerk. In the fourth ward, I want to make sure that for garbage pickup, we need to make sure that we bring the cans in after the garbage people run. Uh, they're staying out there, snow is covering them. Also, we need to make sure that our cars are moved. Uh, certainly on some streets, there's only one side to park on. Also, we're going to change our ward meeting from February the 18th because of the council meeting to February the 19th. The refreshments will start at 5.30. The meeting will start at 6. It'll be at Miguel Juarez on Buttrick. If we can spread that word throughout the fourth ward, I would be most appreciative. Also, Mayor, I'm asking that you meet with Stretch to find out exactly you know, what is really going on. They've been here, uh, I've been on the council since May and they've been here several times. And there seems to be either some miscommunication or some untruths that are happening out there in the community, and we need to get to the bottom of it, lay out the perspectives of what needs to be done in that establishment, and uh, make sure it's being done. Because certainly there's um, three sides, a stretches side, the city side, and the truth. And we need to get to the truth. So we don't have these kinds of meetings where people come up talking about support, but do we really have all the facts laid out? And so behind closed doors, we lay that out 
I've heard all kinds of different things, but I want to make sure that those individuals who are truly involved in the process get an opportunity to speak and make some conclusions so that we don't have this every two or three months. Thank you. Alderman Newsom. Yes. Alderman Turner. Thank you. Um, and thank you, Alderman Kirkwood, because I was going to say that, you know, I, I listen to everyone speak about stretches, but I really have no idea what the issue is, what the problem is. No one said what the, the problem is. I'm sorry. Excuse me, sir. Thank you. So, you know, I'd be more than happy to meet with anyone and we'll stretch if you want to clue me. If anybody wants to clue me out on what's going on, because I listen, I just don't know why you're here, right? I don't know what the problem is. Um, <clears throat> I had not intended to do this, uh, to read this, but I'm going to read to you uh, portions of a letter uh, from the Illinois uh, Attorney General, Mr. Kwame Raoul, regards the um, allegations that were uh, uh, filed by Mrs. Carrasco. And this is important because she and others are under the impression, that, well, I'll speak to her because she made the comments, she's under the impression, obviously, that she has a right to address the audience, and she filed a uh, filed a complaint against me and the mayor and uh, the clerk, clerk Kill Kelly and the attorney, Mr. Long, uh, back on December 23rd. And she filed that relates to the uh, city council meeting that was held on December 16th, wherein, and I'm, I'm kind of paraphrasing some of this, um, I asked Mrs. Carrasco if she was going to speak to the audience or to the council. So. The Attorney General's response to her complaints, in short, says that um, everyone has a right, as we all know, to address public officials at a open public meeting. And I absolutely 100% support that. If anybody supports the First Amendment, it is me, okay? And that's what I was speaking to. If you're here to address the council, address the council, it's not time to address the audience. So Mr. Cor uh, Raul responds to Mrs. Car Carrasco and says that uh, any, the law is that any person, any person sh uh, is permitted an opportunity to address public officials, and that's emphasized, and again, public officials. But as I scroll down, he says, this office has previously de determined that a brief interruption that does not preclude a speaker from completing his or her public comment does not constitute an improper restriction on public comment. Although a member of the council interrupted you, speaking to Mrs. Carrasco, Carrasco and Mrs. Uh, Ms. Burdett, Burnett briefly, you were both permitted to continue your comments without further interruption. Further, the video showed that the continued interruption of your public comment was caused by you, Mrs. Carrasco, arguing with the request from the council that you address it rather than the audience. So again, I just want to illustrate that, and I want to speak to the fact that we as American citizens have certain inalienable rights, one of which is the First Amendment, First Amendment which um, alludes to our freedom of speech and our right to address, our citizens to address uh, government for redress of grievances. Mrs. Carrasco has that every opportunity, as we all do, as you all do, but that's address the council, not the audience. Thank you. Alderman Rivera. Alderman Rivera, please. Excuse, excuse me. Mr. Ford, Mr. Ford, Mr. Ford, you've had your opportunity, sir. Please let us finish on. So, and, and afterwards? And, Mr. Ford, I, Mr. Ford. I, I heard exactly what you said. I don't know Alderman, why you said Alderman, it. Alderman, Alderman, Alderman. Mr. Ford, Mr. Ford, Mr. Ford. Mr. Ford, Mr. Ford. Mr. Ford, Mr. Ford, we're going to ask you to, to leave. Mr. Ford, Mr. Ford, we're going to ask you to leave, sir. Come on, sir. Come on, Mr. Ford. I know you better than that, man. Come on, Mr. Ford. Mr. Ford, I understand your frustration, but let, 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 us, let us finish, sir. Please, let us finish. Let us finish, Ford. Thank you, Mr. Ford. Thank you. Come, come on, Mr. Ford. Hey, Mr. Ford. Mr. Ford, why don't you just leave, sir? Why don't you just leave, please? And you, you're in a position of power. 
Come on, Mr. Ford. Mr. Ford, come on, Mr. I know, Mr. Ford. Come on, go ahead. Come on, Mr. Ford. Mr. Ford, Mr. Ford, come on, leave, sir. Go ahead. Look, come on, Mr. Ford. Come on, Mr. Ford. Thank you, Mr. Ford. Come on, Mr. Ford. Thank you, sir. Come on, Mr. Ford. Thank you, sir. Go ahead and walk him out, stretch. Walk him out, stretch. Thank you. Come on. Come on, come on, Mr. Ford. Walk him out. Thank you, stretch. Let's go, Mr. Ford. Thank you. Thank you. Everyone, we do apologize. As, uh, whenever people get emotional, certain things come out. We do apologize for those who are watching. There was some profanity used. We, we, we understand that, and we apologize for that. We respect his opinion, uh, but we go from there. Thank you, everyone, for enduring. Thank you. Alderman? Alderman Rivera. And thank you, Madam Clerk. Um, obviously, it's uh, a very emotional time, and um, it, it is, uh, it is concerning that uh, a member of our community um, uh, has to come up here with, uh, uh, with, with so much support uh, time and time again. So um, I, I, I do support that, uh, that, that we have to come to some sort of a resolution uh, for this young man, for this business, for this community. Uh, and we have to do it quickly. Um, I, I don't think we can belabor this any longer. Um, sit down with the gentleman and, and, and work it out, and, and hopefully we don't have to have him come back here again. Um, and, and again, I, uh, I appreciate everyone's comments, and it's very hard to come and, and speak about this, but uh, when you have to, you have to. And uh, obviously this is something that has to be taken up rather quickly. Um, past that, I just want to remind everyone, uh, with, with the bad weather coming, um, we do have snow plowing, but um, uh, please keep in mind your neighbors, um, if you do have someone, um, elderly or not, just uh, always go over and make sure everyone's doing fine. Um, other than that, I, I want to thank everyone for coming and have a good evening. Thank you. Alderman Florian. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Um, I just want to say I agree with the comments uh, Alderman Rivera just made. Um, we need to figure out what's happening here and try to address it. But I'd like to emphasize that even though us aldermen are in positions of authority up here, we do not run the police department. If all nine of us called the police chief every day and said, I want you to do this, I want you to do that, it would be chaos in the police department. So we can speak to the police chief, we can make requests to the police chief, we can try to um, give advice, but we do not run the police department. So I, I just want to make that clear that we cannot control what happens on a daily basis in the police department, uh, in spite of the fact that we are city officials up here. Um, having said that, um, I'd like to um, talk about some things that happened in January. I was able to attend an awesome leadership event at CLC called Engage Lake County. The speaker was a, a gentleman by the name of Paul Schmitz. He's an amazing speaker if you ever get a chance to, to see him. His message was about how everybody leads. Um, I think we saw an example of that today, um, where anyone in, in any position, even if they don't feel like they're a leader, can become a leader in, in certain instances. And he also talked about how bringing people in, as some one of the um, speakers said, you can't solve a community problem without having someone from the community. I, I talked about the school incidences. We need to bring the school um, the student leaders into the conversation. They're the ones that live with this on a daily basis. They need to be part of the solution to the, to the problem. So um, it, was, it was kind of fortuitous that I attended this event with all of this stuff happening. Um, another thing I did in January was help the Lake County Coalition and the County of Lake County count the homeless. People have said, why would you do that? Why do you count the homeless? Well, we need to know what, what the problem is, where the problem is, and what services are working and what services are not. So I was able to go out with three of my, my friends, and we went out from 10.30 at night till 2 in the morning. 
Um, our territory was um, 176 to 22, so roughly Lake Bluff to Highwood, and then the lake to the tollway. Um, and, and this girl doesn't stay up past 10, so it was, it was good I was able to stay awake till 2, because <laughs> I don't drink coffee. <laughs> so um, the experience was, was amazing. Um, it was both um, heartbreaking and eye-opening. I was convinced we wouldn't find anybody. I mean, think about it, Lake Forest, Lake Bluff, really, come on. But the, the next to last place we went was the far west train station of Lake Forest, out by 43. And we found an elderly woman, um, and she was sleeping at a table. And um, I think we frightened her at first. You know, imagine if you're asleep and you wake up and there's these five people staring at you. I think she thought we came to arrest her or something. But anyway, she she wouldn't let us help her. She she had been the victim of. Um, identity theft at one point, and so um, we were unable to really connect her with any kind of services or anything, but we did leave her with a, a goodie bag with some stuff in it, And but it, w it was just an amazing experience. They do this every January, so if you get a chance to uh, participate next year, I highly encourage it. The mayor's mother was there with us. She was one of the people out there counting people, so it was awesome. Um, and then one of the other things I did was attend um, the Black Lives Matter reparations meeting um, in North Chicago. And um, it, w it was another experience that really kind of moved me. Um, I've never been the kind of person who believes throwing money at a problem solves a problem. Um, but Ms. Robin Simmons was there who um, is the alderman from Evanston that introduced the reparations um, ordinance for Evanston, and she said, our community was damaged due to the war on drugs and marijuana convictions. This is a chance to correct that. She represents the um, city's historically black fifth ward. Our disadvantage and discrimination has continued beyond outlawing Jim Crow, Jim Crow and beyond enslavement. Um, this plan that Evanston is, is putting forward stems from the idea that African Americans should disproportionately benefit from the sale of cannabis, she said, because they've been disproportionately affected by the policing of marijuana both nationally and locally. I think that applies to us too, and I've been having conversations with the mayor about trying to get an ordinance modeled after Evanston's that would focus on jobs and housing for our community. So thank you, Clyde, to you and your group for hosting that event. I will try to attend the one in, in Waukegan. It was amazing and eye-opening for me, so I appreciate that. Um, and lastly, I'm hosting a ward meeting on February 27th at McCall School, 6.30. I hope to see everybody from the 8th Ward there. <laughs> Thank you. Alderman Taylor. Thank you. Um, first, um, let me say that I think we need to sit down with stretches, and I would certainly love to be there for that conversation. I think we need to address this. I've talked to stretch before um, when some of these issues have come up during the last couple of weeks. I've sent him text messages, have not received replies from him, but I do think that it's time that we have that meeting. It's long overdue. So it's time for that to happen ASAP. Um, second, I want to talk about the 2020 census. A lot of people are very afraid to be counted. They don't want to open their doors. They don't want to be bothered. It's like, oh, you're just bothering me with this. I don't want to give you my personal information. It is so crucial that the amount of money that this city misses in not being counted, please, please, through the churches, through the library, please help us get everyone counted in this because it makes a big difference to the amount of money that we have to offer city services. Lastly, I'd like to talk about people parking their cars on their front lawns. It is not necessary. It's not part of our what we promote in our ordinances. Frankly, all I can say is stop it. And when we have the snow, please get your car off the road, particularly in subdivisions for me in the Ninth Ward, Pleasant Hill, and Hidden Glen. It is a continual problem. 
what this creates is then what happens is you end up calling us and telling us you, your roads were not plowed correctly. We can only do what you allow us to do. If you block the road, then of course you're going to have ice afterwards. Please cooperate with us and remove these cars. Why people don't do it is because they have four or five cars and nobody wants to be the one coming out early in the morning and pulling out the car. Understand this, we have to work together. Get these streets cleaned up. On that particular morning, whoever's parked behind, get up and move your car, but park on your driveways. It is a necessity. Um, like I said, the calls that come in, but all of us in all of our wards have problem areas, subdivisions that repeatedly do it, and I don't think anybody here wants to take the action of having to tow your car away, but it's coming down to it, folks, so it's time for you to cooperate with us. Thank you. All right. Uh, I, I want re to reiterate regarding the plowing. Everyone. Uh, we have been uh, we've been trying to be patient. We've done the P, what we call the PSA, public service announcement. It is coming to a head. Mm. Uh, I think we're going to have uh, Mike. Are we going to have something over the next few days? We, yeah, I think we, think we have. So again, the trigger for everyone is two inches. Two inches or more. We're going to prop. We're, we're going to get a little bit more aggressive with moving of vehicles so we can, our goal, let me tell you what the goal is again. We need to go to the curb line. What does that mean? The curb that you park on, we want, our plows need to be able to push that snow back there. If you allow us to do it at least one time, one time through, that truly helps. If not, we're gonna move to a no parking on the streets for 24 hours. If that car is there, it will be towed at your expense. If we do not start doing this, then you're going to start seeing the repeated phone calls that they didn't come by, they blocked me in, da da da. And we're trying to get away from that. North Chicago, Zion, Gurney, all have no parking on the street at a certain hour. Our, our city is a little bit larger than that. Mm. We do not want to go to those drastic measures. But when it comes to two things that's critical for the maintenance of our community, and that's the plowing and sweeping, those are two things that are critical for the maintenance of our roads, and we need your help. This is, this is a SOS. Help us, or we're going to move to more where we can, we're going to help ourselves. Can I have All right, Alderman. Taylor? I just want to add that, um, as many of you know, I represent not only Waukegan School, but Libertyville and Warren. And Libertyville High School was one of the scenes that was in the Super Bowl commercial. And I oh, just yeah, want to that's say right. congratulations. That's right. It was like a two minute or two second piece, so if you had to look pretty close, but it was um, one of the most popular commercials. and. It's nice to know that one of our high schools was represented. Okay. And uh, second, I think Alderman Florian, you have represent Warren Township. And Warren Township is that's part of the, for those who do not know, uh, Warren football team took second, is it second or third? Second. second in the state of Illinois in football. Wow. So, you know, hey, give it up. Give it up for those young men, young ladies. They worked hard. Hey. Give it up. That's right. Um, before I close out, I, uh, I, I want to read something to you. And this was uh, by, uh, from those in this room might know her, Margaret Jackson. Anybody know, everybody know Margaret Jackson Brown? Yeah. Miss Mary, before you leave, this was, uh, you, you know the person she's talking about. Hold on, I'll listen to this for a second. I want to take this opportunity to let you know about two officers who I feel went above and beyond their duty of police officers, Lieutenant John Oliver and Lieutenant Alexander. I received a phone call Friday evening asking me if I'm not going to say her name right now, Miss Jackson was a relative of mine. 
Of course, I was hesitant to say one way or another. Police officer was calling. He then gave me his full name and badge number and asked me to call police station to confirm who he was, uh, stated, as he stated. He d and then I could call him back. I did just that. When I called him back, he explained to me that my mother had been out at 2.15 that morning in Gurney, had turned into an oncoming traffic. She turned, into, uh, she turned too early and went into the wrong lane. The lieutenant had just got off his shift from Waukegan Police Station, and he was driving his personal vehicle, which was uh, a, a car that was flashing his lights, trying to stop her. Uh, to uh, stop her, he could see it was a, it was a senior citizen. This took this took place at the corner of Old Plain and Washington in Gurney. Mm -hmm. Lieutenant Oliver made a big U-turn to try to stop her. He called dispatch to see dispatch to see if they could get her to pull over. Lieutenant Alexander showed up as well as Lieutenant Oliver was, well, was able to speak with her to see that she was okay. The officer offered, to, uh, the officer, uh, officer offered her a ride home and volunteered to follow her home to uh, her senior living building. He called, he called me out of concern, waiting to make sure she didn't have anything going wrong with her. If this had ever happened before, because uh, he had asked if this had ever happened because this has happened to someone who was dear to him, and he lost this person along with others died in a crash. I came down to the police station, listened to what I could hear on the tape last night so I could address her, after le address, uh, her mom after leaving the police station. Thank God she's perfectly fine and she's well aware of what's happened, uh, what happened last night. She said she thanked the Lord for sending his angel to protect her. When leaving home, when leaving, home, mom, when I, when leaving mom's home, I called Lieutenant Oliver and thanked him again for letting me know and for, giving, uh, for going over and beyond the call of duty. His words to me were, if I ever needed anything to please call, I must say it was very sincere and I appreciate it. Fast forward to a few hours ago, I am out, I receive a call from my mother saying, you never believe who just left. None other than Oliver, uh, than, uh, Oliver and Lieutenant Alexander, just following up on her as uh, on his day off from work. She was telling me how nice these young men were. They shared their, their pictures of their kids. They brought gifts. I could let this go unnoticed. I couldn't let this go unnoticed, and I hope you won't either. I know so many people are quick to complain if, if all the officers were like these, what an awesome community we would, we would have. This makes me so proud to own and live in Waukegan. Best regard, Ms. Jackson Brown. Uh, I often ask department heads to send letters of compliments of the very citizens who are out there so we can read them and pass them on to their employees. While we might not be perfect about everything that we do, but when bad things happen or things we disagree with, we voice them up and they're heard loud and clear, which they should be. But when compliments come in, we very rarely you know, read them out loud so people can hear about some of the things that not only officers but other city employees are doing. I'm going to close out is uh, while the information that was given tonight as it relates to a business in Waukegan, uh, I typically uh, do not say let's meet about it. I try to get the business owner to come and we try to adjust, uh, address those if it's with me or a certain department. Uh, this is a little bit more different. Stretch, uh, Mr. Barnett being, you know, uh, I'm a South Side guy. He's over there, was it, near the duplex, 13th Street. He on my East Campus, he a West. Friendship goes back from South Side White playing ball to, you know, going to Kirk Park to, uh, you know, 13th Street. Family guy. So, uh, 
for those seem that the emotional that you saw tonight is because this is just not mayor and business owner. This is Sam and Stretch, or the people who up here who know Stretch from a while, or his family. So I can understand the, you know, the, the feelings that Mr. Ford had. We get it. But now it's, it's time that others have been involved in this, has been brought to the table. Mr. Kirkwood, you said it the best. There is this side of the story, then that side of the story, and I assure you, whether it be with me or anyone out there, the truth is always in the middle. So, Alderman Taylor, if you choose to, Alderman Kirkwood, if you choose to, as we all know, we can't have no more than three, is it three or four? Three. 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 No more than three aldermen at a time in a room. Anything beyond that opens meetings. So right now, the alderman of the ward, try to get some dates up. Alderman Kirkwood, you brought it in. Have no problem, we'll never have a problem with talking to, whether it be Mr. Barnett or any other business that they feel they're having issues within our community. Um, I'll have somebody reach out to you, Mr. Barnett. But when we come, sir, you can bring whomever you like, whomever you like. Mom, I, I, I would say it's all right for you to come, but you know, I, I, I know it's hard for you to move around. You're not, you can't move like you used to, but it's always great seeing you. But uh, you're, you, re you reared Marcus. Mama, I say mama, my mother reared me. We can work it out. And we'll get back to you. I promise you that. All right? So, Marcus. Maurice. Now, Stretch, we don't even want to go there. All right. So, you give a call tomorrow. You give a date. This week is going to be, might be a little bit tight, though, because I'm going to be in and out. And if you want to meet on the weekend, so your, uh, your, your, your team or the, your, your wife and your, ch your children, uh, I'm open. I'm open. So give me a call tomorrow with a date, and I can get with the alderman, and we go from there. And I, I assure you that once we leave there, everybody's going to be clear about where we're at, where we're going, and what we got to do. That, I promise you, without, a he without hesitation, that's going to happen. All right? Alderman, we'll get it done. You know, we, we've seen bigger, bigger things than this. This is going to get done. And then we go from there. All right, that being said, anything else? Motion by uh, Alderman Rivera, a second by Alderman Bolton to adjourn. All those in favor? Aye. Motion is passed and carried. Thank you, everybody, for coming in.